Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and welcome to the PreSonus Studio One Beginner's Guide. These series of videos are intended to help the absolute beginner whether you're coming from another DAW or whether you've never used any DAW before and you're just getting into using Studio One. These series of videos are gonna help you get up and running as quick and easily as possible with no fuss and no muss to help you navigate your way through Studio One, set up a basic song file and give you a basic overview of all the more common features used in Studio One, both for recording music and for mixing music. Once you've watched this entire series here on YouTube and you want to take your mixing or your recording to the next level, I highly recommend that you check out these three training courses on my website at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. You want to check out Recording in Studio One Artist Made Easy, Mixing in Studio One Made Easy Volume One, and Mixing in Studio One Made Easy Volume Two. Those three courses are designed to help you go from what you're going to learn in these free set of videos and actually help you start making music and mixing music in your home studio. The links will be in the description box below, and there's also a 25% discount coupon that you can use at checkout to get 25% off any one of the courses I just mentioned. So thanks for joining me in this series, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, everybody, so we're um, going to create a new session file or a new song file in this video. So we're here on the start page, okay? If you didn't see the last video where we walked through the entire start page, go check that out. The link will be in the description box below. So we wanna create a new song, whether we're gonna be mixing a new project or whether we're gonna be recording a new project, we gotta create what is called a song file in Studio One. Now again, if you're running the artist version or the prime version, you'll only see two icons up here. You'll see song and you'll say open an existing document you won't see the project page okay but regardless we're going to be clicking on the create new song link and we're going to get our dialogue a dialogue box here for a new song so let me walk you through the uh the layout of this particular dialogue box so over here um, at the top, we have three tabs. We have user tab to the right, interfaces and styles, okay? It may default for you to the user tab um, and that's fine. This is where you could create your own templates, um, which I'll show you in a later video and you can just open up a template so you don't need to create it all from scratch every single time like we're gonna do in this video. And you'll see here I have a template called band rehearsal template, is a template that I created. We'll talk about that in another video. But if you click all the way over here to styles, uh, PreSonus has gone ahead and they've already created some templates for you to kind of get you going in the right direction if you don't want to create it from scratch. So you can experiment with these on your own. The very top one is an empty song file, which is what we're going to create because I want to show you from the very beginning how to do it from scratch. But you can see down here we have six uh, band recording, house techno, instrument sets, mix arrangement, where basically they've set up a lot of the inputs and outputs for you and gave you a rough template to start working from, okay? So I urge you to go ahead and experiment with that, and then you can modify one of their templates and save it as your own. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create an empty song file, but I wanna show you the styles area here, okay? If you click in the middle here under interfaces, again, what PreSonus did, which is really cool, is if you have one of the PreSonus interfaces, they have a template of the I.O already set up for you. As you can see, we have the audio box 1818, the audio box 22 VSL, the audio box 44 VSL, so on and so forth. <clears throat> so they have all of their legacy interfaces, quite a few here, plus all their studio live mixers, plus all of their newer interfaces. So if you're using a PreSonus interface, you may wanna go ahead and pick one of these templates and start working from there. If you don't have a PreSonus interface, that's okay. I just wanna show you this. Again, you can always choose the first empty song file which we'll do in a second here. And then lastly, again, you have the users tab where all your templates are gonna be saved. But we're gonna go, as I said, to empty song because we're gonna start from scratch. On the right hand side, we have some information we wanna fill out here. We have our song title, okay, which is gonna to default to today's date and the user name that is registered to the software. So in my case, David Vignola, but we could change this to anything we want. We can call this uh, B, beginner's guide because that's what this uh, video series is and then we have our location of where we want to save the song file to it's going to have a default that's going to come up on your computer but if you click this little square next to it it's going to open up another dialog box to where it's going to let you navigate to where you want the file the song file to reside on your computer now you can do it on your internal drive you could do it on an external drive that may be plugged in via usb or thunderbolt to your computer if you have an external hard drive 
However you want to do it, you want to navigate to the place that you want to save this song file to and all its corresponding files, which we'll talk about in a second. I'm just going to save it to my desktop here just to keep it uh, simple. Where is my desktop? Here we go. And then on my desktop, we could create a new folder if we like. And I've already created one off camera here called Studio One Beginner's Guide. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to click it in here and I'm going to create another subfolder. I'm going to call this Session. Okay, you could call this your song title. You could call it the album title, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to create it here. And now it's going to save our new song file in this Sessions folder. Okay, I'm going to hit Open. And you'll see it'll default here. So my name of my song is going to be called Beginner's Guide. It's going to be in that new sessions folder. Underneath that, you have your uh, sample rate that you can choose. Everything from 44 uh, point one to 192. A lot of beginners will ask me, well, which one do I choose? Um, and the, uh, the, the train of thought is the higher the resolution, the higher the number, the higher resolution, better audio quality, quote unquote, that you're going to get. Okay, but also keep in mind the higher the resolution, the larger the file size is. Okay, and this is going to become an issue, could be an issue for you down the road if you're doing everything on your internal, uh, say your C drive or your, um, your Mac HD drive, depending on whether you're using PC or Mac. If you're running it on the same drive as your application, Studio One, over time as you build more and more sessions at these higher resolutions, you're going to run out of hard drive space or you run that risk. Okay, so I always tell people a good practice if you're going to be doing lots of recording or lots of mixing is possibly to get an external USB drive or Thunderbolt drive. You could buy a hard drive today very inexpensively. You could buy a terabyte for less than 150 bucks US. And you may want to plug that in and keep it plugged into your computer. And then when you choose your destination, like we did here a few seconds ago, you want to choose that external drive as opposed to putting everything on your internal hard drive. But you can do either. Okay, just keep in mind that over time, the large, more sessions you have, the bigger the file sizes are, the, the, the more pre, uh, hard drive space is going to become an issue for you. Okay, so I'm just going to cancel this. So what I tell people for sample rate 41 44.1 or 44 or 48.0 is pretty standard. I know people that record in you know 88, 96, 176. Again, high resolution files, supposedly better audio quality. But honestly, telling you my own personal belief, you'd be very hard pressed to hear a difference between 41 and 48 or even 48 and 96. So honestly, 44.1 or 48 is just fine for 99.9% .9 of your applications and it'll keep the file sizes reasonable. So let's just choose 41. Again, resolution 24 bit, 32 bit float, 16 bit. Keep it at 24 bit. Just realize that a commercial CD is actually 44.1, 16-bit. That's a commercial CD. That's the resolution and the bit rate, okay? Sample rate and the bit rate. But we could keep it at 24. Again, you could pick 16, 24. That's fine. Time base, you can either choose bars, seconds, samples, frames. We'll talk about what this all means in the next video when I, or in a few seconds when I show you the song file. For now, you can just keep it at bars. The song length, if you know what the song length is going to be, you can type it in here. If not, you can just default it to whatever it comes up is. I think it comes up at two minutes. Again, I'll show you why that's important when we get to the next screen. But for now, we're just going to leave it at five minutes. Tempo, again, 120. It'll default to if you know what the tempo of your song is going to be, you can type it in here. Don't worry if you don't know. You can leave it at 120 and we can change it once we get into our song creation, which we'll show you in a bit. And again, time signature. You can choose the time signature. We're just going to leave it 4-4. You can also choose what key it's in. Again, for people doing song production, this might be valuable to you. For me, I'm just going to leave it alone. Here's something that's super important. Stretch audio files to song tempo. You want to leave this unchecked. Okay, it comes defaulted checked. When it is checked, what that means is it's going to default to whatever tempo you set this at. Let's say it's defaulted at 120 and you don't know what the tempo of the song is. Okay, you, you leave this checked and let's say then we're going to import files into our audio. Let's say we're going to mix a session and we're going to import audio. Well, if that audio file that you import doesn't match the 120 or whatever tempo you have here, it's going to stretch the file or it's going to slow it down. It's going to speed it up or slow it down to the tempo. Not a good idea unless you absolutely know that the audio that you're going to be bringing into Studio One, okay, this is more for when you're importing audio, not recording from scratch. When you know that the import uh, audio tempo is the same as whatever you put here.
So I always leave this unchecked, okay? And that means that no matter what audio I bring in, doesn't matter what the tempo is set at. If it's set at 120 and I bring in 90 beats per minute audio into my DA, into Studio One, it's gonna play it at 90. It's not gonna play it at 120. Hope that makes sense. If you're a little confused, stop the video, rewind it back a minute or so, and listen to what I just said again. That's very important. Play overlaps, I leave that unchecked, okay? So then once I do all of that, I hit okay. You're gonna see an empty song file is gonna come up, okay? We have nothing here, it's, it's an empty song file. Okay, that's what this is. Now let me explain to you two things that we saw when we created our song that I said, wait until we get to the next screen and you'll see what this means. The first one is the time, um, the time um, lapse. Right here on our timeline, we kept it at bars. So that means it's gonna count in bars up on our timeline here. If I right click on that and I go to time base, you can see I can change it to seconds. Okay, I can change it to frames if I was working with video. Again, time base, I can go back to, I could put it at samples. I could put it at bars. Okay, and I can go ahead and I can quantize it. Okay, I always leave it at seconds. For me personally, depends on what you're using. If you're gonna be using a lot of MIDI and doing a lot of, say, drum programming or instrument programming, it might be conducive for you to put it into bars as opposed to seconds or put it into samples, okay? That is the, remember at the last screen where we saw where it said, what, what do you want the time base to be? And we left it in bars. That's what that does. It, tell, it sets up the timeline for you, but you can always change it just by right clicking and go to timeline, okay? The second area of the prior screen that we looked at where I said, don't worry about the song length, it defaulted to five minutes. What that does is when you come up to this little area here called the marker track, and you set your markers, you'll see we have a start flag. And if I zoom out, we have an end flag, okay? And the end flag is set to five minutes because we said at the beginning when we created our song file in that dialog box that we wanted the song to be five minutes long. And I said, doesn't matter what it is, just let it default. I think for you, it will be two minutes. I put it at five minutes. And you may say, why is that important? That is important when we go to export our song in a future video, one of the choices that we have when we wanna export is from the, be from the start end marker to the end end marker. So if you wanna, if you have a, say a three minute song and you wanna mix down and export the entire song once you're done recording it you want to set your start flag at zero and then you want to start your put your end flag let's say at three minutes and I'm just left clicking and dragging it and what that's going to do it's going to export the song from beginning to end so these start and end flags are very important for when we export later on that's why this is important but when you first set up your song file if you leave it at two minutes or five minutes or whatever it defaults to that's fine you can always left click and drag your start and your end flag anywhere on this timeline for later use okay those are the two areas so we have the timeline and the start and end markers those are the things that you can change after the fact okay so that is how you create a song file here in Studio One. Now, one other thing I wanna show you before we end this video that's very, very important that a lot of beginners um, that are new to Studio One miss this and it causes problems for them down the road. The first thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna import uh, an audio file here just so I can do this as an example. Uh, to import an audio file, all you do is come up to your browser here by clicking this browser button. And we're gonna walk through the browser in another video. Come up to files and this is where all your files reside on my desktop. Let me just find an audio file here, just so I can find one audio file. Uh, I'm just gonna grab an acoustic guitar track, a WAV file. You just left click and drag it and it'll automatically create a track here, okay? Now I'm gonna save this, um, save this song file, okay? And this is what's gonna come up here. And again, I'll talk about this in another video, but I wanna mention it now. Whenever you bring audio, import audio into Studio One for the first time and you go to save it, a dialog box is gonna pop up and it's gonna ask you, do you wanna copy external files to the media folder? The answer is always yes, and I'm gonna show you why in a second. Now, when you first launch Studio One and you first install it onto your computer for the first time, this dialog box option is not checked. We have to turn this on to remind you of this every time you go to save the files. And I'm gonna show you where to do that in a second and then I'm gonna show it to you again in a future video. But for now, just hit yes. Okay, where you turn that option on is Studio One, 
go to preferences. If you're on a PC, you're gonna see an options menu and go to preferences, but for a Mac, it's Studio One preferences, okay? And in this preferences window, and we're gonna walk through this whole window in a different section, but I wanna show you this one thing. Okay, under locations, down here, ask to copy external files when saving a song. Defaulted, this comes unchecked from when you first install your software. Turn this on. Also, turn on the auto save document so it auto saves every so many minutes. I have it set to five, you could set it to two, you could set it to 10, but it's a good idea to auto save in case you have a computer problem and you're in the middle doing a bunch of work and Studio One crashes or your computer fails for some reason, all your work that you had done, if you forgot to save it, is gonna be lost. So turn those two things on, make sure they are checked. Once again, it's under the locations tab under user data in the preferences window. Okay, hit okay. Okay, now that we've saved this and we've turned this on, I wanna show you why I imported this audio and I wanna show you the folder structure for Studio One. So I'm just gonna minimize this for a second. I'm gonna to go to my desktop and I'm gonna to go to my Studio One beginner's guide and I'm gonna to go to my session folder that I created a few minutes ago. Beginner's guide, okay. So when you create a Studio One a session or a song. You're going to have the song file here. Here it is, beginner's guide.song. It's a song file. You're going to have a cache folder and you're going to have a media folder. In the media folder, you're going to see this WAV file, the acoustic guitar that I imported into our session and I saved it. And you say, okay, Dave, why is that important? Why this is important is because when you close your session, and let's say a lot you're working on your internal drive, and you want to say move your you want to move your session to another drive for some reason, um, if you just move the song file and you don't move the cache file in the media folder along with it, the next time you go to open up this song file, it's not going to recognize the acoustic guitar that we just brought in. You have to bring all these three files. You got to copy them and bring them to whatever other drive you wanna save it on. That's why I say when you first set up Studio One, it may be a good idea to think about down the road having an external hard drive that's plugged into your computer, unless you have like a two, three, or four terabyte drive on your computer, or an external, or an, either an external drive or an additional internal drive if you're working on a PC. A separate drive from the operating system, a separate drive from the application drive, which is usually you're out, you're the same drive, your C drive that your applicate that your operating system's on is the same drive that Studio One's gonna be on. You wanna run your sessions on a separate drive, because again, over time you're gonna run out of hard drive space. And if you set this up properly the first time, you never have to worry about, oh, when I move my session from one drive to another, am I getting all the files? That's why I'm showing this to you. So it is important that you put it in its own folder, I call the beginner's guide, and then if you wanna move this to another drive, you copy the entire folder, that it contains all three of these files and you'll be just fine, okay? So I hope that makes sense. So that is how you create a song file in Studio One. Come on back for the next video and we will jump further in and I'll help you navigate through this entire screen. So I'll see you in the next video.